When it comes to man-made crystals, for me, they just don't feel right. Things like goldstone, that glassy opalite, and dyeing different things like agates and halites. However, there is one family of crystals that I will make an exception to because the power and potentiality of these crystals is absolutely amazing. These are the aura quartzes, and today we're going to dive into one of my favourites. It's known as angel aura quartz. So welcome to Crystal Confab, where we dive in and have a bit of a casual informal chat about one of the crystals we love, and we hope you love too. Joining me today, of course, is Kyle and Nicholas. How are you today, gents? Doing well. Doing well, thank you. Beautiful. Now, I want to start off by kind of really clarifying, you know, I've got my 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 favorite angel aura quartz. It's actually a Lemurian seed angel aura quartz here. But Nicholas, I remember seeing on your Instagram, I don't know how long ago it was now, you did this amazing explanation because when I first started collecting crystals, there was only one type of aura quartzes. And obviously the different metals that you fuse together, you get all the different colors of the rainbow. But as time's gone on, I've noticed there's different other kind of ones. Um, and many a time, even buying on online, I've got disappointed with what's actually rocked up is not what I believe to be a true aura quartz. But can you run us through what the aura quartzes are? Yeah, absolutely. So in the late 90s, there was a scientist in the Pacific Northwest here in the United States who came up with this process of applying a really thin, like microns thick uh, layer of uh, precious metals to the outside of quartz. And later they did it to some other materials as well. And um, the first experiments were done with gold, which produced that, you know, beautiful kind of aquamarine blue color. And they were kind of iridescent. And so they, they nicknamed that aqua or, or, and over time they you know, tried some other things out with different metals and that produced things like our rainbow aura, titanium aura, the angel aura that we'll be discussing tonight. Um, and it was a pretty closely guarded secret. The, the way of applying that metal to the outside um, is a process that goes by two different names. It's called precious metal anodization where they're, you know, vaporized. It's also called vapor deposition. Um, and you have to superheat the quartz in a vacuum chamber under intense pressure um, to allow those metals to become a gas, like the air we breathe. Um, and the quartz in that environment also generates a tiny electrical charge thanks to its piezoelectricity. Um, and that, that kind of calls, if you will, the metals to it to make that permanent layer on the surface. And it's a very, very thin layer, uh, but it is permanent unless you're going to, you know, take it to a, you know, bit of lapidary equipment, you're not going to sand it off. Um, and that was pretty much it. And while I imagine there are some other folks who figured out how to do this in some other parts of the world in the, you know, last, I mean, certainly in the last 10 years, um, but in, in more recent years, we've seen kind of this explosion of aura-like materials being sold. The kind of second generation of them are done through a process called um, electroplating, where you put whatever it is you want to electroplate in a solution um, that has salts of, of usually some kind of metal. It's almost always titanium with these guys. Um, and you run an electrical charge to that. You have two little diodes, a diode and anode, and it, it you know runs this current through the solution, which breaks apart the components of the salts. Um, some of them become neutral and some of them migrate in the case of the metal, um, the metallic bases migrate to the surface of the quartz. Um, and you get wildly different kind of degrees of quality in these. Um, sometimes you get a really nice even coating. They had to turn the stones partway through to do that. Other times you can see like the metal grating imprints on the bottom where they didn't turn them. Um, sometimes there will be bald spots in them. If it's a thick enough coating, it's pretty permanent. If it's not, it can rub off. Um, and this is far less costly than making the, the kind of precious metal analogs using the vapor deposition process. So you can make a lot more material for a lot less expensive, but no matter what color it is, it's almost always done with titanium. So the so-called aqua aura quartz that's made with the second generation process, still colored by titanium and not gold. Um, same with our, our angel aura not coming from things like platinum. It's, it's always almost always going to be titanium. And then um, a few years after that, we see an entirely different substance on the market being called aqua aura quartz or aura quartz kind of broadly speaking, and it doesn't use metals at all. Um, the crystals uh, get 
dyed first to produce the kind of undercoat of color. And then they're sprayed with um, synthetic things like Teflon and other polymers to produce the iridescence on the outside. Uh, sometimes these scrape off really easily. Um, sometimes when you pull the price tag off of them, the color comes with it. Um, so, you know, these can have any number of, of chemicals applied to them. We don't necessarily know because not every uh, treatment facility is doing the same thing as they're spraying them. There's lots of runoff, so it can't be good for the workers involved. It's got to, you know, have some environmental implications as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's not truly aura quartz anymore at that point, I think. It would just really be quartz with some stuff sprayed on it, really, and artificial stuff. And that's similar to what I was talking about before about injecting dye into agates and dyeing halides and things like that, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, people can collect whatever they want to collect, whatever they're called to, whatever they find beautiful. Beauty itself is therapeutic. Um, but if, you know, we're coming at it from the, the you know, traditionally but still modern uh, practice of um, crystal healing, um, I just don't see how something that's coated in resin or plastic or some other polymer is is going to hold up. Those are insulative kinds of materials, and I just feel like it's going to prevent the quartz from doing all the things we hope quartz is going to do in our life. Now, I know Ashley did this amazing experiment where she actually got uh, the clear quartz and the metals that were made to make these different um, aura quartzes of all the different colors and would check the energy free, uh, the energy field of them. And then she'd compare that to the um, to the actual aura quartz, and she found each time that the aura quartz almost doubled in its energy field. So this first type is I love them for amplifying just their own properties. We you know we often forget that metals themselves are crystals; they're just a crystal made of a single element, so they have their own potentiality. And we know that clear quartz amplifies all other quartz, uh, all other crystals. So I love this first type, Nicholas. How do you feel about the second type? You know, I think as long as we're okay with titanium being the element involved, we're not over romanticizing something as containing an element on the periodic table it doesn't have. I, I don't see why we, we can't appreciate it. Um, the coatings are quite a bit thicker than they're going to be on the, the first generation material. Um, and they're often quite a bit more uneven. So, you know, we might need to bear in mind that they require a little extra care um, and you know any number of other things can be introduced to them to also produce some of those colors so it's not going to be a a single pure element from the periodic table it's not just gold or just platinum or just titanium it's going to be a range of other stuff to produce that iridescence and you know at the end of the day there's still runoff from those um, you know chemical salt baths they have to go in and you know we have to contemplate like how how well is that being disposed of and you know how much care is given to the folks who have to deal with those caustic solutions i don't know if you've got any insider information that you can share with us but the type one um does seem to be a bit of a protected um you know like you said um process um and it does seem to be that finding that type one aura quartz is getting really really challenging and difficult do you know what's happening in that realm uh, so far as I know, the the guy who invented the process is still making it. I'm I'm not entirely clear whether other folks have have cracked the code. I've heard rumors, but um, and because a lot of this stuff happens so far up the supply chain that if you're even just a couple rungs removed at you know giant trade shows, it, it's all a kind of oral tradition, if you will. You know, it's all mm. hearsay. It's all anecdotal stuff. Um, so it's it's hard to verify those things that we hear um, at at those kinds of events. So I've I've heard um, that the process has been copied in China, but also China seems to be the center of production for a whole lot of things, um, things that are you know wonderful, fine, valuable mineral specimens, and then also some of our cheap knockoffs. So, um, you know, it's a big place with a huge population and a huge market. So we, we can't pin all of our problems or our successes on, on a place. Um, we just yeah. have to know, you know, the idea of enhancing gems, of faking gems is, is so old that you find earlier than, than medieval manuscripts talking about ways to tell authentic gems from inauthentic ones you find uh simulated gems going back to ancient egypt and earlier so 
Um, it's it's just human nature. Carl, you've obviously had experience with the different types of aura quartzes. What's your experience? Um, personally, it's very for me it's a very quick feeling of difference and as nick touched on nicholas touched on that um coating whether it's breathable or not whether it holds it in or not i think you really i can feel the difference between them i was lucky enough to kind of unlike a lot of people nowadays start my connection to the industry sort of 15 years ago when fake auras weren't really around the the real auras were kind of the only ones that were coming around and being sold and bought um so i was kind of lucky to get in and most of my stuff is from about 10 15 years ago and i find it very um interesting when you see it's it's almost like it's more metallic it's almost like it's more shiny it's more there's something more to it and they've taken it that bit too far but it, it also yeah we have been faking and simulating and editing and changing the feeling of gems minerals crystals for forever um but if we break it down to quartz and platinum or silver titanium then you can kind of develop that connection to what the energy is doing mm -hmm. guys for the you know for people that are we're obviously talking about the aura quartz and I, I should say you can actually get to the best of my understanding every color of the rainbow depending on which metals are in there so in my collection i've pretty much got Red, orange, yellow, green, blues, dark blues, pink, purples, and uh, um, you know our beautiful angel aura, or sometimes called opal aura as well. If someone wants to try and start collecting or get their hands on angel aura quartz that we're talking about today, or any of the other auras, they walk into a shop. How do you think? Have either of you got any guides that you could offer on like how do you pick apart from the feeling? How do you work out if it's real or not? Nick, Nicholas, you said the great thing about the um, price tag. If the price tag takes the colouring off, definitely not one. But any other ideas, Nick? Nicholas? Sorry, we're, we're being Australian. In Australian, we, we abbreviate everything, Nicholas. So we, we, we'd constantly call you Nick. Sorry. No worries. Um, yeah, so one of the big telltale signs of that kind of um, polymer-coated material is that it often looks kind of wet. The sharp edges are going to be a little bit more rounded. You can sometimes see the glaze with your own eyes being uneven, thicker in some places, thinner in others. I've seen ones where you can see drips as it dried. Um, the, the better made ones, it might have a more even coating because they took more time to uh, prepare it, but um, still look for that kind of wetness. Um, definitely look for bald spots, if you will, where the, the coating is, is missing or absent. Um, one thing that I think is um, probably helpful, but not a foolproof test between generation one and generation two, because of the second material, the electro plated stuff is well made. It's hard to just know by sight, um, but price tag is going to be a good one. And also the quality of the material, like um, that original lab that did all of it in the early days, mostly did it with really good stuff. Um, and nowadays, a lot of low quality um, rocks, not even just quartz, but lots of other things, get this kind of electroplating on it to hide its imperfections, to hide all kinds of things. So yeah, you're going to find your kind of run-of-the-mill obelisks and towers and spheres and other things that, that can have a true aura coating on them, um, but not as much as you're going to find just really stunning looking quartz like that Lemurian sea crystal that you're holding up is a great example of a fine crystal to start with that got this on as an enhancement rather than as um you know a, a, a way to kind of transform its outer appearance to distract us uh, a friend mm. of mine in the local world um he likes to refer to uh aura quartz particularly the later stages as being kind of like the drag queens of the crystal world you know they're wearing a face full of makeup and we can celebrate that and enjoy it, uh, but we have to remember that they they don't look like they do out of drag. Yeah, I, I think drag queens are a lot more fabulous than types two or three, but I definitely know what you mean for sure. Um, and I would agree with you totally about, I have been, you know, I've been working with crystals for over 30 years now. I love my aura quartzes. I've got a good collection of them. And occasionally I've seen a picture of one on an online site, a reputable shop, um, you know, price is reasonable a little bit higher but not you know dirt cheap and gone no i think that is one purchased it it arrives and it's definitely you know typed 
definitely a type two, if not a type three. And it's really hard, I find, shopping online for your aura quartzes unless you can really be guaranteed. Yeah. How about you, Kyle? Um, I totally echo the price tag thing. That's the one thing that I've noticed is quality and price is like I've got an uh, aqua aura that comes from such a beautiful specimen. The color is so even. It's such a really beautiful piece of quartz. I've got another um, rose aura that has the most beautiful needles. And most of my old aura comes from really beautiful pieces of quartz. So it totally confirms, totally confirms that you don't see it as much like for me especially you don't see the sort of type one og on anything other than quartz right like it, it generally is essentially basically on quartz whereas the type twos and threes you see on selenite and kyanite and amethyst and everything else and that kind of for me completely defeats the purpose of aura quartz because aura quartz is about taking quartz which is programmable and intention based and the master energy that we can work with and then adding something to that raising that vibration shifting that upwards making that something more something better than what it could be or bigger than the sum of its parts as it were if that makes sense yeah definitely um and and we could probably do a bit of a master we could probably talk here for about six hours and go through all the aura quartzes but we won't we won't do that today let's dig in a little bit to um, angel or a quartz specifically where would you reach for that Kyle for me with angel or a quartz it's all about like raising the vibe as it were in inverted commas it's kind of helping yourself to feel more optimistic more positive more relaxed less negative less frustrated it's basically about shifting those feelings vibrations energies that can make us feel a bit held back feel stuck, feel frustrated, stagnant, whatever. Generally, I will reach for my angel or a quartz when I just want to shift it off. It's like uh, shaking off the coat as a dog would if it gets wet or like taking off a couple of coatings when you've come from the cold into the warm. It's like, okay, I needed that for the time being. That's what I've picked up on, but I can take it off and come back to myself, kind of cleanse myself and return back to kind of oneness of authenticness my wholeness as it were and I find it really helpful to meditate to connect to my spirit guides to enhance those connections I find it really um easy to develop that uh, openness I find it really um it, it kind of expedites the situation quite quickly for me it um opens those channels it removes those lower vibrational things it helps me to feel better quite quickly and quite easily and I don't need a large piece of it I don't require um a long time with it it kind of for me has a more rapid energy than your regular quartz does and it kind of moves more quickly in how it works but then it can allow you to move slowly it's not going to move quickly all the time but for me like the initial it's like okay let's get into it let's move out of the way what needs to be moved out of the way so you can get to where you need to go basically i really enjoy its um ease there, there's a lot of minerals and crystals that i have um had dis-ease with, with getting to know them and i think that's part of the challenge and part of the fun uh, part of the journey whereas um with aura quartz for me it's straight to the point and quite direct and um it doesn't really fluff around but it has a really soft comforting nurturing energy and i find you can kind of work with it throughout the day like in the pocket as a piece and it's going to kind of keep you going like energizer bunny kind of thing with that kind of long lasting or long enough lasting for a day at least um or i love to also have it placed I, I would say in particular places in my meditation space, it's not going to be like uh, at a really important place, but it's going to be at a couple of places to kind of add what I need. I, I usually work at, uh, work with it in uh, complement with a couple of other minerals for my meditation space. Um, I find it really um, supports energies that have a similar vibration, but are different, something like angelite or celestite or even selenite. I find they all kind of party on a very similar vibrational level and kind of work really nicely as a way of really making a space protected and safe and clear for you to work with. 
Mm. And, and Nicholas, how, when would you reach for your angel or a court? You know, I think there are a couple different metaphorical lenses that I might might use as my reasoning for connecting to it. Uh, aura quartzes generally have this kind of alchemical vibe. We're taking two things that are, you know, seemingly so different and bonding them in a way that they're producing something really unexpected. That iridescence that we see is a result of thin film interference. So, you know, the, the light coming through gets scrambled as it passes through that teeny tiny, you know, a few molecules thick layer of, of precious metal on the outside. And for me, that's like a shift in perspective. It allows us to take something as ordinary and bland as white light and break it up into its components. So I might turn to angel or, or, or angel or quartz or any of the other or quartzes for that matter to um, kind of get a, a fresh perspective on things. And then I would also look at the elements involved. And platinum is one of our, our noble metals. Uh, rarer even than gold. Um, it shares a lot of qualities with gold. It shares a color somewhat with, with silver. And so alchemically, it's sometimes thought to transcend the, the binary, the polarity, the kind of complementary forces that gold and silver represent, kind of associated with uh, the sun and the moon, the yin and yang, so to speak. Um, so uh, for me, angel aura quartz is going to be um, like transcending our 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 binaries and helping us really come into a sense of wholeness. And, you know, if we think about traditional lore about angels, they don't fit into a binary either. They, they're, they're genderless, they're sexless, they're cosmic forces. They're, they're, you know, they do us the favor of showing up in, in a corporeal form we can relate to every now and then sometimes um, in, in um, early literature. And, you know, when I think about um, platinum being similarly you know, beyond that kind of division, beyond the binary, I think it helps us just become more truly who we are without having to fit into a particular box. Yeah, I love that. I think when you look at, you know, silver is that traditional yin kind of moon energy. And when you do look at what the energy of platinum is by itself, it is very transformational. It moves us forward. And I think that being amplified by the quartz, when we've got this angel aura quartz together, that is a real strong message of often we feel in this world that for us to progress, we need to kind of drop into that yang energy. And yes, that will help us when we do our work. It helps us to achieve different things and tick certain boxes in some aspects of our life. But sometimes it is about that bringing in that more yin energy. And when we stop and when we slow down, we can actually progress a lot farther, especially when we're looking in the spiritual realms. You know, that it's not about getting somewhere. It's about just allowing. And the more we allow, things will happen. And I feel... Angel or a quartz for me has really, really allowed me to do that. Um, a, a key word that really comes up for me with angel or a quartz is just beauty. And not necessarily just like glamour beauty or fashion beauty or uh, physical beauty, but just more being able to see the divine beauty in the world and how everything unfolds as it should. And even being able to see things that sometimes at first seem tragic may actually be, you know, divine intervention or a beautiful way that the world unfolds in its quirky little way. You know, we often experience challenging times in our life, but later look back at them and go, well, I'm kind of glad that happened because look at where I am today. I'm sure none of us here and no one listening either um, would be happy to still be with their first ever partner, but we were probably heartbroken when we broke up with them type of thing. So I find Angel Aura brings this real peace in helping us transition through some different challenging times in life um, and to find that change really easy. One place in particular I've had extreme success with this is, well, not for myself personally yet, but pregnancy and birthing um, is a really, really good one. Um, I Obviously, especially for someone who's having their first child, I can only imagine the, un, you know, the unusual things that are happening with your body, the, the unfamiliarity and the comfort and, you know, different people journey through that differently. And then the idea of birth and then coming home. And I hear a lot of people, they get home after being in the hospital after a couple of days and they're like, right, what do we do with this life form? And that can be really unsettling. And I think angel or a quart, um, I know it's really great to even place on the stomach if uh, someone is experiencing, um, uh, what do you call it, morning sickness. Um, but all the way through from fertility, pregnancy, birthing, and beyond. I think angel aura quartz is a really nice one to have around 
to just allow yourself to go easy on yourself as this change happens in your life and as the baby's growing and that type of thing as well. So if you do have a friend who loves their crystals and you're wondering what to get them and you've got a baby shower coming up, if you can find a really nice angel or a quartz, that could be a really beautiful gift that I think I'd really appreciate and find some great benefits from in that way. Um, we've talked a little bit about like this alchemical aspect. Do you think that um, aura quartzes have a bit of a link to maybe the ancient civilization of Atlantis? You're reading my mind, Adam. You're literally reading my mind. I find it really interesting, that kind of link between the idea of Atlantis and Atlantean energy and aura quartz because a lot of what's known about Atlanteans is they manipulated and affected and changed the energies of things. They learned how to harness crystalline energy. And I think that idea of aura quartz really harks back to that idea of them harnessing those energy energies themselves. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. Obviously, there's Atlantis, which existed somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. That's still being debated. But then there is uh, Lemuria, which is another ancient civilization that is believed to have existed down here in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia was kind of part of that landmass, it's believed, and so on. And they do say that, um, you know, people that have had visions of Lemurian, uh, the priesthood in Lemuria, wasn't so hierarchical, I find, as Atlantis in my experiences. Um, but often that color, the angel aura, um, glimmer of robes and, and the cloths that they would wear would actually show in the Lemurians as well. But I would definitely say this is much more a uh, Atlantean stone rather than a Lemurian stone. I feel the Lemurians worked very much more with what they had and how nature delivered it. Whereas, as you said, Kyle, the Atlanteans really did like to see how do we bring things together and play around with them, didn't they? Mm. I think it's yeah. really important as to how some people are very reactive and they don't like it or they are immediately drawn to it. it. You know, maybe you do have a connection to Atlantis and that's why you are drawn to it. Maybe you've never had a connection there. There's no connection. You don't feel drawn to it. You come from a more Lemurian energy, which is more natural. And so it kind of goes against what you feel connected to. I think people have that innate kind of like yes or no as soon as they see it. Mm -hmm. Nicholas, would you do you feel the Aura Quartz Atlantis, Atlantis link? You know, I, at, at this point in my spiritual practice, I view things like Lemurian Atlantis through the lens of metaphor. Um, they are archetypal symbols that speak to our subconscious. So could we link those metaphors? Absolutely. Um, I don't really, uh, while there was a point in my teenage years that like aqua aura was like deeply important to me and I coveted this one treasured pendant that my I, I got for a birthday one year it was the only thing I wanted and, and my parents managed to track it down and deliver um and uh I just kind of outgrew it I've moved on to other tools that I don't I don't feel any strong connection to or away from it it's just a chapter in my life so I don't I don't have like a strong link to it these days and therefore um it's not really um, not not setting off any alarm bells about yes, Atlantean, no, it's actually the morning mm -hmm. or any of the above. Kyle mentioned before about pairing it with other kind of like energy crystals, and we know that clear quartz crystals do amplify other crystals' energy. Is there any pairings that you would pair angel aura quartz with? I mean, if we wanted to kind of underscore the angelic vibe, there are a lot of ways that we could go. Um, Kyle mentioned selenite, angelite, celestite, they'd be great options. I also think emerald could be really nice. Um, emerald has this connection to the celestial sphere. It is it is thought by several cultures that emeralds were gifts from, from heaven, from the gods. They were found in Eden or paradise, depending on, you know, what the scripture or group of people's um, doctrine was. Um, so that could be a really nice option if we wanted to partner it with something a little bit more grounding and stabilizing so it's got this kind of upward momentum, you know, platinum is a really expansive energy, um, then I would say uh, probably a weird pairing that I would enjoy are um, these type of androdite garnets that are only found in a few places around the world, but they're called rainbow androdites. Um, you can get them from Japan, Nigeria, uh, Mexico, Nevada, New Mexico. Um, the Japanese ones are near and dear to my heart because I love Japanese minerals, but um, like the crystalline structure of, of garnet 
um, garnets are nesosilicates. They're like real heavy because it's like a little island of silica in a sea of metallic ions. So they're real dense. And then it, you know, is a, an isometric or cubic crystal. Um, and the cubic crystal family is going to be the most um, grounding, the most like deeply related to materiality and form. But because it's got this same kind of uh, we'll say it's not really opalescence, but it might evoke the image of opal or iridescence or even labradorite. A lot of folks have, I've seen compare it to. Um, it's got this kind of optical effect that is similar. It is produced by thin film interference. Um, and, you know, we get these starkly different mechanisms in the two, but by virtue of their shared optics, they're going to like harmonize really well to create a broader spectrum effect that is both stabilizing and expansive. I'm going Tyler, to, I saw you uh, do a little dance there. Eh? <laughs> um, rainbow, Japanese rainbow garnet is one of my like top, top favorite minerals. It's one of those ones that I've only finally in the last couple of years been able to work with and access myself. Um, and I'm going to try that pairing. It sounds really interesting and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try that as a pairing. I, I, I actually haven't had Japanese rainbow garnet yet. So I've got to get, get my shop on and get shopping for that. Um, one of the one of the pairings that I really love with angel aura quartz is just good old rainbow moonstone, and I find angel aura quartz does really excel as a full moon crystal. Of course, this week is the full moon in Aries, and one of my favourite crystals for the full moon in Aries is um, the angel aura quartz. The reason being, you know, we often hear that with the full moons there are different, um, you know, it, it's in Aries, it's in Gemini, it's in Capricorn. What does that mean? Well, we know that each zodiac sign governs one twelfth of the population, but it also governs a different aspect of our lives. For example, Gemini is to do with our education, our learning, and our mental well-being. Um, Capricorn is to do with our job and our career. Aquarius is to do with community and humanitarian pursuit. But what's Aries about? Well, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, and it actually governs zero to seven ages in our life. So what is a zero to seven year old concerned about? Themselves. And so the full moon in Aries is actually the full moon about yourself. Now, for some people that may seem a bit selfish or self-indulgent, but when it comes to spirituality, I think it's a really great time to spend one of the full moons each year to stop and pause and think about what you need. A lot of people feel that they're worrying about what they need to achieve in the world, the impression they need to give out, that sometimes they're worrying about family and partners and friends and all that type of thing. And they give from everything they have to, to the world. The full moon in Aries is a really beautiful time to stop and go, what do I need to be at my best? And we've talked a little bit about the two crystals, or the two metals, sorry, that make up angel or quartz is that platinum, which is transformational, and silver, which is that yin, kind of slow down moon energy of contemplating how can I stop, how can I regenerate, and how can I be my best so I can then give my best to the world. And I really love angel or quartz for being that tool to allow you to do that so that you are in all the other realms of your life, you can, you can give your best. I often kind of think of the full moon in Aries as being like the warrior full moon. And if you're a warrior, a warrior doesn't go around and worry about everyone else. They have to make sure that they are strong, that they are fit, so that they go into battle and they can do their best. Now, hopefully you're not going into physical battles each day, but we do have challenges in life. And if we're not at our best, if we don't know what we need to be at our best, then we can't give our best. So a little practice if you'd like to try this for the full moon. Aries being a fire sign, I like to do a little bit of candle magic around this time. So what I would love to do is get a candle, pick your favorite color, because remember this full moon is about you. But if you get lost, a red candle for Aries can be great, or you might go just a white candle for the full moon energy and anoint it with an essential oil. My favorite essential oil is um, coriander seed. Coriander seed actually helps us kind of get back to focusing on ourselves as well. And just anoint that. And as you're anointing that uh, candle, visualize and think about what you need. And you live in your life, where you are the principal character, not a kind of an extra that kind of comes in occasionally, where you are focusing on yourself. Light that on the night, meditate, and infuse that energy also into your angel or a quartz. Then each day between that full moon and the next new moon is 
sit down each day, hold your angel or a quartz, connect in with that energy of caring for yourself, seeing the beauty of yourself, seeing the value of yourself, and just light that candle for 15 minutes and just do that and just remind yourself of that and, and ideally get the candle burnt down by the dark moon the night before the full, uh, the next new moon in that way. And that's, I find, how I'm going to be using my angel or a quad. And I'd love you to give it a shot if you'd like to try and, you know, let us know in the comments, come back and, and share with us whether you start to notice a difference about what happened when you put yourself first. And I think this is a really great crystal to allow you to do that. That sounds fantastic. I'll have to give that a try this whole moon. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Now, before we wrap up, boys, anything else that you think we've missed about Angel or a Quartz? Or another question I'll ask, I'm asking two questions at once. Do you have a favourite or a Quartz out of all of them? I mean, the first one I fell in love with was Aqua or a Quartz. It's hard for that not to still be precious to me. I still have that very first pendant. The crystal came out of its setting I think decades ago at this point, and it is still in my jewelry box. And, you know, every so often as I'm rifling through, I pause and I, I, you know, sit in wonder as I turn it through the light. And um, I, I just love the alchemy that made it. Beautiful. Totally Kyle? Agree. Totally agree. Or Aqua Aura Quartz is definitely amazing. My favorite piece is actually, um, I have a rose aura, as I mentioned, cluster, and it's about palm size. All the crystals are about two centimeters and it's just hundreds of needles and it's this beautiful soft, it's back there somewhere, beautiful soft pink um, color and it just shines and every time I hold it, I just feel 4,000 million times better than I was feeling a second before. Stunning. I actually love Tanzanora Quartz and I actually attribute that to helping me write my first book, Crystal Connection. I found when I would wear it, um, it was almost this visual I get is like a white light. I knew what I wanted to say, but because I hadn't written a book before, I didn't know how to say it. And it was almost like this white light would appear above my head. And like a waterfall, the words would just tumble into my mind and off I'd go kind of thing. The only one thing I do warn people about Tanzan or a quartz is I find if I didn't take it off, probably you need to take it off by the time you have dinner. Because if you keep wearing it into the evening, I'd be laying in bed and the ideas would keep flowing. But I found that one was my, it's my favorite writing stuff known out of every single crystal I have. Really, really beautiful. So, yes, as you can see, there are so many different aura quartzes. So we're going to have to have a few more confabs about some other aura quartzes, I think. Make sure you join us next week when we dive into another crystal. Will it be an aura quartz? Will it not? Who knows? Let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about in the comments below. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Take care and blessed be. Bye. Bye.